Hello and welcome to Let Me Boy You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I'm here with Vinny Andre Newland. He's here with me now as he has been lately I'm hoping he's going to be a little bit calmer tonight it's hard to know <sighs> oh blimey so it's 6.22pm good boy good boy Vinny good boy calm down no we're not play fighting no you didn't even want my attention until now. He was quite happy being in the other room. Seriously, he was on the bed or on the windowsill, wherever he was. Wasn't interested in me. And as soon as I turn that, well, as soon as I start talking to the microphone or start setting the equipment up, that's him. He's in it. What are we doing? What are we doing, Dad? <laughs> are we making my podcast again? Okay, it is kind of your podcast. You are the star, really. It's it's both of us, isn't it? It's me and you. It used to be me and Andre, now it's me and you. Yeah. Yes, it is. Me and Vinny. Me and Vin Vin. So, I will, before I start, I want to say a big... Send a big, loving hug to Molly from me and Vinny. So, Molly, if you're listening to this, big hugs. Can only send virtual ones, unfortunately, because you're the other side of the world. Literally the other side of the world. So, what, what is it if it's... So Thailand is... Because Australia isn't... Wait a minute, so I'm trying to work it out. Three, six... I think... Thailand is 6,000 miles away. I think. Have I got that right? And then um, Australia is probably another six on top of that. So it's about 9,000 miles from here. I think. Blimey, come. That's it. Just calm down. But time wise, it's 12 hours so basically if you go to from here to thailand and you do it in two different journeys so you go to dubai for example and that takes six hours or six and a half hours and then from dubai to thailand is another six or six and a half hours depending now as far as i'm aware from thailand to from Australia to Thailand is about the same distance as Dubai to Thailand. So I think it's about six hours. So my estimation, that would be 12, what, 16 hours on a plane. But again, I might I might be wrong. So I used to think it was only 12, well not only, blimey, 12 hours is a long time to be sitting in one chair. Although I've done it a few times here. <laughs> but at least here I can get up and I can stretch and I can let off as much wind as I want. You know, I can't do that. So, well, you can do it on a plane. But, I mean, it's, what surprised me is how noisy planes are. Because I hadn't been on a plane for 20 years. Last time I was on a plane before I went on one a couple of years ago was 2002 I think so it's very strange I'd forgotten how loud they were not quiet things at all I mean I had my headphones on which are noise cancelling headphones and I, I wore them for quite a lot of the journey but I couldn't wear headphones all the time I'm getting itchy feet now I want to go not traveling but I'd love to go go somewhere I guess that is travelling isn't it <laughs> I don't know just yeah it'd be lovely I just don't know how to how to make it happen though that's the weird thing 
anyway so what I, what I was saying is so by a plane it's what a long journey but if you go through the earth's core it'd be quicker wouldn't it although and this will be more for trivia tuesday trivia tuesday trivia tuesday i'm gonna i'm trying to try and think of some kind of um i need to get some little tunes don't i for the things like q a friday or trivia tuesday that this today is monday's boring objects yes it is yes it is philly i'm talking to him um so this is the first of the monday's boring objects and this is kind of an extension of something that i used to do i used to do sleepy boring objects uh in the past but i'm now going to incorporate it into the sleep uh, the let me bore you to sleep family podcast so it's going to be part of this the same as the q a fridays are and tomorrow's trivia tuesday will also be part of that as well uh, i probably won't do any more new days for now i think three is enough um i would say that i have the q a friday is now established because i've probably done it for blimey half a year now it's it's ridiculous but it's true i mean let me have a look i can tell you exactly let me get to my phone Vinny. stop licking it stop licking the phone okay so uh that's weird right so q a friday q a friday when was the last one it was number 24 so that's 48 24 48 so it's nearly half a year 24 weeks 24 fridays in a row it's nearly half a year so it's not it's blimey let's say five months anyway in it so it's five months so i would say i don't know you may agree or not that that's fairly established so now i just want to say robin sent a message posted a message yesterday saying i think trivia tuesday is a great idea uh and i said thank you christine said i love boring objects cool so that's what i'm doing today really to be fair because of what christine said also i'm going to do the i decided to go ahead with the trivia tuesday because of robin and you know so other people are saying that they think it's a good idea so thank you for your feedback Murray Joe, I did I would have, did I mention this yesterday oh this is three days ago okay I won't I would have mentioned it just saying I love your podcast listen to your podcast every night so helpful with uh, my insomnia so thank you um, oh yeah I've got another one I forgot Sunday is Sunday's pa- Sunday papers so I've got four four days now that I'm going to be doing a, a specific thing so Sunday Sunday papers what well, if we start on Monday Monday's boring objects trivia Tuesday Q&A Friday and Sunday papers so four out of the nine days or well, however many days in a week there's going to be actual particular things I guess it's it's kind of my way of just trying to make things a little bit more structured maybe although to be fair just because I've got a title for the day you know doesn't mean it's going to be a structured recording I don't think that's ever going to happen so I did a poll so I asked yesterday has anyone got any ideas what you'd like me to talk about for Monday's boring object and then I posted them into a poll today 
this was this morning and I had and you basically just let people choose so I've got crock pot tea bags the bins reusable shopping bags wellies leftover change money elastic bands and lastly all different types of glue so only two of them didn't get any votes elastic bands and leftover change money which I'm surprised because the person that vote that mentioned those hasn't voted for them but I don't know who it was but someone did because I, I collected all the different things so here's what I've got I'm going to give you the the results so I will need to come out of here sign in under oh sign in under my Jason Newland hypnotist profile because I'm the admin well it's my group isn't it but the, I'm the um, I can't do any admin things under my normal page Jason right here we go that's weird it's still not giving me well okay let's just see what the percentages are crock pot six votes tea sorry no tea bags I've just deleted crock pot I didn't mean to sorry tea bags was the winner with 46% so Chris, Ruth, Sarah, Tina, Sky, and Samantha have voted for that. So, uh, Diana, Robin for reusable shopping bags. Wellies was Andrea, so that's Boston Chicky, and Anita. All the different types of glue and crock pot. I just deleted by accident but that didn't have that that had a, um, a few people as well but it didn't have as many as tea bags so I apologize if you if you voted for tro crock pot um, I don't know how I managed to delete it that's weird well I pressed the cross button which is to delete but I didn't mean to so uh, that's it that's what I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about tea bags <laughs> so the way I normally do these things is I just I don't necessarily talk about the subject as I don't research the subject I don't I mean especially now because I haven't got the laptop in front of me I could use my phone but I don't I just talk about my experiences or maybe my knowledge of that particular product and tea bags is a really good one to start with because I'm guessing everybody has had a life experience with a tea bag <laughs> a wonderful experience I don't everyone so and you got tea bagging I was going to call it tea bagging or tea bags, but I suppose it could, you know, because tea bagging for those that don't know what it means, it's basically just it's what you what you use, uh, you know, the tea bags that come with strings. Because some my tea bags that I've got, I think I've got triangle tea bags. Uh, I think they're better because they released. The <laughs> this is boring me already, because they release the flavour. Apparently, that's the advert I remember. Pyramid, pyramid tea. So some tea bags come with strings, like little tampon kind of things, and you don't get modelled up. Oh no! And you you can dip it in and out, and that's what what's uh, that's what's called tea bagging, I think. So. I I don't have any with strings on but I have and it is handy because 
instead of using a spoon to dip it in and out of the hot water, you can... <laughs> I'm doing the visuals here. You're missing out. It's no video. Damn it. I'm actually moving my hand almost like I'm manipulating a tiny little puppet made of tea and you, you lift it up in and out of the of the hot water and it's it's probably a little bit more satisfying than using a spoon but I use a spoon and I, I don't I don't find it really makes a huge difference to my life but it's something I don't know I quite like the this, yeah, the strings are okay, so I guess I would say I'm a tea bagger. It, you know, over just a normal tea bag, just a tea bag on its own. It's quite nice to sometimes it, to wake up to a nice tea bag in, and you know, you can just, it's just because if you leave the if it, so I, I get a little bit for, um a little bit not frustrated, but I, I want. I want the tea. You know, I've got I'm, in my breakfast. I want the tea, and I want to have a cup of tea. And it's just putting a tea bag in, and uh, I don't know if I put, yeah, I normally put a tea bag in first, and then the, the boiling water. And it's just when is it going to be ready? And even with a spoon, like picking it up and then dropping it in get splashes splashes go everywhere sometimes they end up with splashes on on my um in my eyes yeah sometimes they end up with tea in my eyes it never happens when i when i go to have tea bagging so it's it's just i just think i mean i say my eyes my glasses although saying that i don't wear my glasses for my when i get my breakfast because when i get when i get up in the morning but which is what I do tomorrow morning. I did it this morning as well. Uh, on a a proper day when I've made a recording the day before, which is for me that's a proper day. If I don't make a recording, a let me boy to sleep recording, then it's not been a proper day. That's how I um I feel like I've accomplished something. Maybe not much, but something, you know, like I've actually, I've created something, I've made use of some of my time. And, and bearing in mind that with the recording, making a recording, editing, processing, uploading, that's at least three hours a day I spend on that. So maybe an hour and a half making the recording because most of my recordings seem to last about an hour and a half these days used to be an hour on the dot I don't know if you remember that always used to finish within an hour like just pretty much an hour I don't know how many more times I've got to say an hour to stress that it was literally an hour but now I, d I don't watch the clock unless I do so, I mean, if, if for example, this was a Saturday night, or Saturday afternoon, should we say, because boxing's on Saturday afternoon in Dubai. No, not in Dubai, in Wembley. And it's the Anthony Joshua Dubois fight, and it's a big old occasion, part of the Riyadh season. That's going to be starting about 3 o'clock. So I will need to do the Saturday recording if I make one, you know, looking like doing it at mid midday or one o'clock, or if I st if I do it two o'clock, start at two o'clock, and the boxing starts at three, then that will be an hour long recording, because I'll have you know have to watch the time, because I don't want to miss the boxing. But outside of that kind of situation. I generally don't watch the time when I'm making a recording. Especially now that I'm sitting back in the settee, on the settee, I don't have the laptop in front of me 
although yesterday I did have the iPad in front of me, but that was, I was using an app with the, not yesterday, yeah, yesterday, was Sunday, yesterday, it was Monday today, Sunday, yeah, yesterday I was using the app Readly, R-E-A-D-L-Y, and that's got newspapers on there, so I was reading, because it was Sunday's, Sunday's papers, so, but they didn't have the time on it. There's no time on that app, so I didn't know what time it was. It was easy enough to, to look if I wanted to, but, you know, I don't, I don't like to... I don't really like to put that limitations on myself. So, when I get up in the morning, that, that was the point I was trying to make. When I get up in the morning, I'm going to talk about tea bags. I'm about to. I'm about to. Blimey, give me, give me, give me a chance. When I get up in the morning, so my normal morning routine is I wake up. I guess that's pretty universal for most people. <laughs> I suppose it's kind of the first thing you do, isn't it? You wake up, go to the toilet. I mean, maybe one day it'll be the the, the opposite. It'll be reversed, but hopefully it won't. So I wake up. Then I go to a toilet. I've got to do a wee wee because I've always got. I always need to go to a wee wee when I wake up. Now, sometimes I have to wait a little while before I can go for a wee wee because I. I don't want to ruin the ceiling, but it's it you know, which is a good thing. It means that everything's kind of working. So, I go to do wee wees. I normally like look in the mirror and say hello to myself. <laughs> I got this new thing. Oh, it's, I don't know why. I'm, why am I telling you this? Okay, because I do. I do weights. I got weights in my bedroom, and I do them every day. And the only part of me that looks okay is my arms. I mean, my shoulders look okay as well, but <laughs> the rest of me is just. It's like a, I don't know. Is anyone, I don't know if you ever had Angel Delight, or what's the other one? Whip, something whip, cool whip. Can you imagine that? Just holding a, a bowl of that, of cool, a plate of cool whip, or uh, jelly, or, uh, you know, something like that. It's, and they're just running along, just seeing it wobble. That's my body, basically. But my arms and my legs and are okay, kind of. So I do this thing where I just, I don't tense my arm, but I just move it up and down so I can see my biceps moving. And it's, I don't even know why I told you, because it's not like I've got big biceps, it's just they're not too bad. <laughs> And it's about the only part of my body left. That it's not the only part of my body left. I, or most parts are still there, but just it, on its own, it don't look too bad. Because sometimes, you know, because the mirror, which is to the side of my toilet, it's in the bathroom. This, if 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 I turn my back to the bath, then there's a mirror, and it's uh, a little cabinet. Oh, what do they call it? What's the kind? You put it in the bathroom. Oh, bathroom cabinet. So it's one of them. It's got two mirrors and two little doors. It's been up there since I moved in. My dad put it up. And I remember that because he helped me move in. Well, he didn't help me move in because I, I didn't have any belongings. Which is weird, right? Because I lived in this smelly old little room before I moved here and it was in a basement I was living like a vampire basically it was brilliant anyway I had a punch bag a stand up punch bag exactly like I've got in my bedroom exactly like I had I literally this is the third one I've had every time I've moved I've left it and they're like 
200 quid, 250 pound each. And every time, or 180 pound or whatever, be going back 10 years, but I left it there. I did it when I moved out of the place I was, yeah, when I was doing my degree in counselling, I bought one and put it into the garden because I was going to boxing like twice a week. So I had that and I'd train every night. Well, when it wasn't raining, I'd train for like an hour in the garden. But when I moved out, I just left it there. In fact, to be honest with you, I forgot all about it. I was so focused on just moving my stuff because I was evicted. And I was given notice and everything, but I completely forgot that the punch bag was there. And then I got another one in, not the next place I moved in, but the one after that. So a year later, so I stayed in the place for a year, then I moved to this dungeon place. So I got a punch bag, a stand-up punch bag that I had in a little kitchenette area that I had. And I had that there for a couple of years. And then when I moved out of there to move here, I just chuck it, I just put it into the garden, the front garden. I don't know why. Why didn't I bring it with me? I left my weights. Uh, I just, it's almost like I didn't want to bring anything with me. I had to bring the bed because I needed to, well, I needed a bed. I didn't have a wardrobe. I didn't have, I had the smelly chair. <laughs> it was, everything was damp in that room. So I had the chair that I brought with me. And I, I booked this big lorry or van. It was a lorry, yeah, but like a removal lorry truck thing. And they laughed when they came in. They said, look, because three men turned up, this big truck, and all there was to take was a couple of bags of clothes, some books, and one bed and a chair. They just, literally, I think they took one thing each and it was that was it. And it was right at the back of the truck and there was enough room. I mean, you could have fitted like 200 people in there. Um, I guess, I don't know. But that's not really my expertise of how many people you can fit in the back of a lorry. But I'm just, just saying, I mean, lots of tea bags. See, I, I remember what we were talking about. I did have a kettle. I had to buy my own kettle when I lived in that room because there was nothing there. It was a kitchenette at the end of a quite a long room. What it, it was very there wasn't I could nearly touch either side of the room of like width wise with my arms. And as you know, I'm only three foot tall, so that's quite difficult. So it wasn't particularly wide, but it was just wide enough for him, for the landlord to legally let it out. But even though as the ki he had a kitchenette, it was a shared toilet or shared bathroom. So it wasn't eligible to be a flat, even though he called it a flatlet. It wasn't eligible. So when I was unemployed, near the end of living there, I wasn't able to get the full rent. So I ended up paying £22 a week myself towards the rent out of my £60 a week benefits or whatever it was I was getting. So yeah, it was... But I did have tea bags, which is the point. See, I will bring it back to tea bags continuously. And that's the difference between this and the other podcasts the let me the other normal let me boy to sleep ones I do. This is still a let me boy to sleep Monday boring objects. But I will keep bringing it back to the subject. To the object. I mean really it, sh it could be Monday's boring subjects or Monday's boring objects or Monday's boring objects slash subjects. But that's a mouthful, isn't it? So when I say objects, it doesn't have to be, you know, it, it, it could be, you could, it could be planes, but it could also be plane journeys. Now, plane journeys isn't an, an object, is it? 
holidays isn't an object. Um, haircuts isn't an object, but it that's also valid. Does that make sense? So it is. It just opens up the opens it up. So there's lots. There's so you know, I've got what am I 68 now so I've got 68 years I've got over 12 years of experience of being alive so I've got um, he's 3 foot tall and he's 68 years old um, so yeah I yeah the punch bag it was weird I left it I could have just said oh, because they were there to help me To it's not like I had to carry this stuff myself and I paid a good bit of cash to get the delivery as well, to get it all done. It was a professional operation. I didn't just, like, get a friend to do it for 10 quid. It was... And they, they laughed. I said, why Why did you pay so much money? Because they were just working for the company. They, they didn't... I think it was a charity. I think I might have... It might have been the Heart Foundation... Yeah, I think it was the Heart Foundation, and they they would also do deliveries and stuff. You, I think, and or it was Emmaus, which was a homeless charity. Either way, I didn't mind because the money was going to charity, so I was I was fine. Just happy to get out of there, really. But why didn't I take my punch bag? And I gave my other... Because I've had a punch bag in here since I moved in here, pretty much. I used to have a hanging up one. And I gave that to my friend downstairs. He never used it. And he's told me that he's, he was going to give it to another friend. Like, well, if you don't want it, give it back to me. I don't be giving it... Giving my stuff away to other people. I've never been so angry. I just... <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to bring that phrase back. <laughs> that phrase, phrase back, catchphrase. Um, so yeah, anyway, I have had, how many punch, this isn't about punch bags, is it? Okay. How did I, why was I talking about punch bags? So I wake up in the morning, I go to do a wee wee. I get out of bed. Now, when I do get out of bed, I have to be very careful not to squash this one. Because as you're laying down, or as I lay down, I'm on the left side of the bed. So let's say there's two pillows. One's on the... Oh, blimey. Sitting... Yeah, if I lay on my back, the wall is to my left. But technically, I guess I'm on the right side of the bed. He's on the left side of the bed, facing the bed. If you're at the bottom of the bed, the right side is where I am. But when I'm laying on my back, that's the left side. He's on the right side because to my right is where he is. He sleeps either on the pillow, his pillow, or he sleeps cuddled up to me, or he sleeps at the bottom of the bed. So... I have to figure out where he is before I get up because I don't want to disturb him. Like, for example, this morning I woke up early, about three o'clock, which is rare. I normally wake get up about four, sometimes five, but it's you know, about four o'clock roughly. And I'm in bed by about ten, nine or ten. Last This morning I woke up early, but it wasn't, Sometimes I wake up early and I'll get up and I think, why did I get up? You know, I only woke up because I needed to go to, to to the toilet. And I'm, you know, and I'm sitting there trying to edit a recording and I'm falling asleep. But I realised this was different. I was awake, but I was actually awake. And I think part of the reason of that is because I got up so early on Sunday morning to watch the boxing which meant I spent quite a lot of time in bed yesterday 
so I didn't kind of need so much sleep. So yeah, that's it really. Tea bags. Um, I don't drink tea, so yeah, there's no point in this. Uh, but anyway, that's the end. This is the end of the recording. I, I, I don't drink tea. Why have I chosen to talk, talk about this? No, I didn't used to drink tea, you know. For years and years and years. Never drunk tea. Not true. Okay. I didn't drink tea at home. I used to drink tea at work. Or coffee at work. But I didn't drink tea or coffee at home. I just drink water. Or coke or beer or whatever. You know, I wouldn't really drink tea or coffee. It just wasn't my thing. But I was, I did grow up drinking tea. I say grow up. I, I, I drunk tea. I don't remember drinking tea before the age of, I don't know, the period of like seven onwards. I don't remember drinking tea at seven. But I know we used to have tea, cups of tea, you know, as a family. So that was just a, a standard British thing to do, just drinking tea. So I definitely used to have tea. I wasn't a big fan of coffee. Especially coffee that has hot milk in. Like, you know, because it's, it's just... It's that skim across the, the top that I just bleh, don't like. So, uh, but tea bags. I mean, there was a time, I remember... I don't think us as a family, like in the house where I lived, with my dad, my stepmom, my 600 brothers, the we just had tea bags. My memory is we had tea bags. However, ooh, when I went around my nans, or my nan and granddads, she would have property, like in a teapot. Know, tea leaves and yeah and she'd have a like a tea strainer and yeah and biscuits and her rock cakes oh they were lovely love her rock cakes so yeah that was but that's tea leaves so that's a different subject isn't it really although technically tea bags are tea leaves in a kind of Condomy, um, okay, maybe not condom, but you know, uh, s contained, imprisoned, <laughs> imprisoned tea leaves would be a tea bag with perforations. Is that the right word? Little holes, little holes. Yeah, I mean, it's quite ingenious, really. When you think about it, it's just my nan didn't like tea bags, so it wasn't real tea. Uh, I think she was a she was more horse and cart kind of girl, you know, like these spangled new things with wheels. No, it's just if you only thing she'd have wheels on is a wheelbarrow. Um. Or anything with the word wheel attached. She never drove my nan, never drove a car. My granddad didn't either. I don't know if he was able to. I'm saying that because he was in the army. He so he was that his career was in the army um, before the Second World War. So when he retired at twenty nine the the war it was just just before the war broke out and then he went back in for another six years or whatever but he'd served his time so I'm guessing you don't join the army without being able to drive they teach you to drive I'm guessing because he he would have gone in the army straight from school and he you know because my nan had a army pension his army pension she had her own pension and some other stuff so remember her saying to me that she's better off now than she's ever been financially this was well blimey she's 
be, she'll be gone 10 years in December the end of December 29th of December 10 years she would be gone so but she said to me I was going to say when she was alive but that's kind of obvious I mean I mean if I was able to contact her through some kind of medium or she was able to contact me from the spirit world she's probably not going to be wanting to talk about pensions is she it's probably more interesting things to talk about or tea bags funny enough now that's something I might talk about you know if I was a ghost I might come back to start discussing the time that I used to iron my underpants and my socks but probably not everyone's going to be wanting to talk about stuff like that anyway I'll be coming back you won't believe El I met Elvis Presley and his feet stink he's got stinky feet Elvis has got stinky feet of course he hasn't but you know just something silly like that would be weird and so yeah tea bags so when I get up in the morning I wake up I get out of bed very carefully so I don't squash this one and sometimes he'll open his eyes and look at me and if it's early he just like nods like nah you're right I'm staying here just closes his eyes again because once he's zonked out that's it for him oh, it's getting hot in there that was my jumper my cardigan zip by the way just in case mm. so uh, he he sometimes he, he will wake up and he'll look at me and I'll I'll get the bed covers and I'll put them over him and he's okay for the next four hours if I do that and then other times he just follows me in there or I'll, I'll go into the bathroom do a wee wee and then I'll come out I'll go into the, the kitchen and I'll take my tummy tablet which is for the acid reflux take one of them a day in the morning probably like half an hour to an hour before I eat and then I come into the living room sometimes he's on the settee already just looking at me or giving myself a clean yeah, let's call it that, yeah. Or he's laying down on the on the settee. So I'll go and sit down at the table at my desk where my laptop is. Open that up. I look for you should check the stats on the podcasts. Check Facebook to see if there's any messages, any new people join the Facebook group, which we have had today. And I forgot to mention it. Let me mention it. Let me mention. We had a new member. Oh, Jason Newland's Facebook group. No, Jason Newland's boring Facebook group. So, where are we? Here. Let's welcome our new member, Emily. So, hi, Emily. Welcome to the group. The group. What? What on earth was that? I've joined Threads, which is like uh, an extension of. Is it Facebook? I don't know. But there's, or is it Instagram? Extension of Instagram. The thing is, I don't know how it works. I'm very confused. Very confused by the whole thing. So I look at it and I just like, I don't know. Just don't understand how it works. 
Maybe I'm being slow. It wouldn't be the first time. Oh well. So I can't want to come out of that. Uh, uh, uh. So I just check the stats, have a little look, see YouTube, check YouTube. If I've got a podcast to edit, that's what I do. So I'll walk over to the recording equipment, take out the disc, you know, the, the little um, S. Hey, calm yourself down. Take out the SD card and then I'll stick it into the. Uh, the extender thing extender I don't know what it's called but anyway it clicks into the iPad adapter yeah adapter I think they call it. it you can basically connect things through the lightning USB or from the normal USB things into the iPad through that so it's like an extension adapter thing and anyway, so I put the the disc into there and I'll open up the I'm not going to go through everything I do it but I, I start editing I start editing the the podcast and then after I've I try and do all of the editing if I can but I don't I can't they say get it all done so the editing can take an hour um, so what I do is I do some of it I get as much as I can done and then I go into the kitchen and I'll boil the kettle but I have to make sure that there's no lime scale in the kettle so I kind of squish it around a little bit and because I don't I'm not a big fan of lime scale and stuff So I boil the kettle. I have ready brick in the morning. So I, I I put some milk in a bowl. I normally have to wash up the bowl because I've only got two bowls. I've got one plate and two bowls. And the two bowl what one bowl is quite often I've got one dirty one and one and one soaking. Or I let them both soak in overnight. And I wash one of them up. The thing is, the washing up liquid I got at the moment is really strong. It's very liquid, but it's this lemon thingy me jig. And it's it doesn't stink, that's not the right word, but it's very strong smelling. And I don't I can still smell it on the plate or on the dish rather, the bowl, the breakfast bowl. Or it could be a soup bowl. I mean, you could eat. Or you could have. So Vinny started barking at something in the garden. What was that on your on your tooth? He's got something stuck in. No, just look. If I want to do that to your tooth, I'll do whatever I want because your teeth belong to me. <laughs> yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay, maybe they don't. He's laying on me now. I'm just stroking his his uh, chest. He likes having his chest stroked. He does. So, so I boil the the kettle, and I put some milk in a bowl once I wash it. The thing is, this the washing up liquid is so strong that I have to keep rinsing it out until the smell is gone. The smell of the washing up liquid because that I don't want that on my bowl I did realize that actually part of the reason I was smelling it because it was I had I had bubbles on my thumb so I was smelling my thumb instead of the bowl and the bowl was fine it was just I was smelling I was smelling the washing up liquid because it was on my thumb in the in the form of bubbles but now what I do is I rinse my <laughs> what the f what am I talking about? Um, I um, I now rinse my thumb so that that doesn't happen anymore because I've learned 
from my mistakes. <laughs> it's a new thing. And I put some milk in, into the bowl. It's pretty much the same amount every time. I don't measure it. I don't have a little measuring bowl because I don't really see the point. Uh, especially as I put the, the ready brick, the powder, whatever it is, the oats, into the milk afterwards. So it kind of doesn't matter how much milk I put into the bowl. It just means the more I put in, the, the bigger breakfast I'll have. So I'll put that into the microwave for the same amount of time every time. Blimey. There was a very strange noise coming. Shaking the whole flat. What the heck is that? Ah. Mind you, I did hear a motorbike earlier. Maybe it's a motorbike. Yeah, it's a motorbike. Bless them. Uh, yeah, so I... Two minutes and 40 seconds. I used to do two minutes and 50 seconds. now I do 2 minutes and 40 seconds sometimes if it's a smaller amount of milk I do 2 minutes and 30 seconds occasionally I'll do 2 minutes and 20 seconds uh, it just depends sometimes I have a feeling <laughs> I have a feeling that it doesn't need so long I don't I don't know why I just get the feeling like no there's 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 not enough in there you know, maybe it's the end of a bottle. It's it's not enough. Doesn't doesn't justify the extra ten seconds of microwave ability. So I'll put that in there. What I'll then do is the bet. Let's say the kettle's boiled at this point. I put the tea bag in the cup first. That's a. I always do that. It was a mug, but it's not a very big mug. I used to have a big mug. But I don't know where it's gone. I think I might have broke it. Definitely used to have a big one. Um, this one is it's blue. I don't know where this one came from. Might not even be mine. It might be someone else's. So, because sometimes, I mean, my friend downstairs used to come up here with a cup of tea. Or I'd go down there with a cup of tea. You know, and I'd, we'd end up, I'd end up leaving my plate there or leaving... Oh, I wouldn't have a cup of tea in a plate, would I? But, you know, maybe he'd have something... He'd have a, he'd, sometimes we'd swap each other's cutlery or dishes and stuff. He'd, he'd have my plates and sometimes I'd have his plates and he'd cook a meal and he'd give me, give me the meal and I'd keep the plate. And sometimes... Sometimes the plate tasted better than the meal. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. It's not true. Uh... I've never, never eaten a plate that tasted nice. No plates taste nice. So I... That mug might have belonged to him. I'm not sure. I don't think it did, but this way... It's, it's, I don't know. I can't remember. But I've only got... I think I've got one mug left now. Just, yeah, I seem to have lost a lot of uh, plates and dishes over the years. So... So I put the tea bag in first, that's the point. And then I put the hot water in. And I leave it in there to ferment, or whatever the right word is. Uh, gradiate. I don't know, what's the correct word for ferment? Is that the right word? Ferment? So then I go into the bedroom. I go into the bedroom. I go into the bathroom, and I do my bathroom deeds. Uh, at this point, I normally need another wee wee, uh, and well, I don't need one, but I do one anyway because I figure while you're in there, you might as well just. It, it just makes sense, doesn't it? 
it's like if I go into the kitchen and I've got an empty cup or an empty plate, I'll take it into the kitchen with me because that's it's just the journey I'm making, so I might as well make use of that journey by taking something with me. So that's why I feel I might as well empty my bladder if I'm near the bladder empty and machine. So that's what I do. And brush my teeth. And then I use the mouthwash. And then I clean my face with the wet wipes. I've got these Nivea or whatever, you know, the face cleansing wipes. They're, they're I don't know, the moisturizer and all kinds of things. Uh, so I use, I do that in the morning and at night and sometimes more than once a day if it's like hot, a hot day or something, if I've been particularly sweaty. Um, and yeah, and then I wash my hands as well, just so that I've, I've probably already done that after I've been to the toilet, I pretend, because I'm saying it out loud. If I say that I do it afterwards, it might sound a bit grim. You mean you only wash your hands once a month? No, I didn't say that. So I do that and then I dry my hands off. Now during this period, I normally hear the microwave go ting, ting or whatever, which is that means that the microwave has finished its work. I mean, that's the only thing it does all day doesn't you know it gets used once a day and that's its whole purpose really is just warming up that milk it's not a bad little job is it really so I do that I mean I'd rather be a microwave than a toilet wouldn't you I mean at least I haven't got to buy the microwave flowers once a month and a letter of apology occasionally Put it this way, I've never had to book a Valentine's dinner for my microwave. <sighs> so anyway, so I come back, I've, I've done that, I come into the kitchen again, and my tea's ready, so I move that, because that's got the tea bag, because that's what this is all about, tea. So tea bags, I move the cup onto the side, away from the cupboard, and the reason for that is because when I open the cupboard and I pull out the, what's it, the, the bag of oats or the ready break, sometimes a few bits just like of dust from the oats sprinkle down and I don't want them going into my cup of tea. So I move the cup of tea away from that. I get the milk out of the microwave. Uh, it's still in the bowl. I find that's the easiest way to transport it and it's normally because if I did this and I just waited because sometimes I've had ready brick and I've just waited for it to ting bing and I go and get it and it's too hot the bowl's hot and it's like quite unpleasant it's not a, it's such an enjoyable experience but if I do it in this process by the time I go into the kitchen, the bowl, it's not cold, but the bowl is cool enough for me to pick it up and everything's at the, the correct temperature, pretty much. So so I do the I do the ready break, then I come into the into the bedroom and what I do is I turn the TV on. At this point I haven't had the television on. And I sit down. Vinny's either in bed or he's sitting on my chair, my seat, and he moves out of the way. And if he is in here, he cuddles up to me like he is now. Sort of lays down and he cuddles up to like my on the, the seat seat bit where I'm sitting, rather than on the leg rest where he likes to hang out sometimes. And he goes back to sleep. Or he just goes back into the bedroom or he might still be in the bedroom dreaming of tea bags I imagine 
so and you know that's my morning routine the thing is I nearly ran out of tea well, in fact I did run out of tea bags the other day and I said to my neighbour I, I didn't know what to do because I didn't have enough money to buy any tea bags and I don't like to ask for things I don't, especially neighbours I don't like in real life I don't like to really kind of bug people for, especially for things like that anyway I kind of did because I was I was running out I, well, I didn't have any and I was going to have to have my breakfast in the morning without any tea bags but I did get paid that next morning but it would have meant I'd have to go to the petrol station at like 5 o'clock in the morning or 6 o'clock and I didn't really want to do that journey really so the night before I just I sent a text didn't phone because I didn't want to sort of disturb her there's a neighbour downstairs and I texted and she I said uh, I suppose you've got a couple of tea bags I can nick please and she didn't reply I thought oh no I've overstepped the boundaries I've over I've gone I've gone too far this time oh what, what she must what she what is she thinking above me blimey asking to asking for a tea bag I was like oh I knew this would happen one day but then I think she was out and a couple of hours later she replied of course and I'll bring them up now and she came up and she gave me like a big bag like it was in a plastic bag not not a uh, you know like a shopping bag but a, a see through plastic bag full of tea bags and I it's the same brand as what I uh, smoke, not smoke, uh, drink, which is PG Tips. Or is it Tetley? No, PG Tips. So, and she, she buys them in bulk. I only wanted a couple, but she gave me enough to last me the week. So, that was good. I didn't have to buy any tea bags at all. <laughs> I thought, well, I've got enough here. Because I only have four cups of tea a day. One in the morning, one early morning when I wake up, one eh, mid morning, one mid afternoon, and then one, two, three, yeah, one like late afternoon, and I don't have any tea after that. The last time I had a cup of tea is about four o'clock. I don't drink tea in the evening. So I. Yeah, so that was quite good. But I just, just like, oh, I don't, I don't like having to ask. But I just, the idea of getting up and not having a cup of tea just felt weird because I got into that routine of drinking tea in the morning. I mean, there was a time back in... Blah, 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 1997 and I was living with my friend I had a security job I can't remember which site I was on because I had lots of different sites that I worked at over the years that I was working there but I did I used to wake up in the morning the first thing I'd do was make a cup of tea and have a bit of toast and I'd go back to bed I'd write in my journal because what I had to, I was a prolific journal inputter so I used to you know, write every day and I'd, I kept journals for a long time and it was my only real expression I guess my only real way to kind of I found it was fairly good to kind of discuss with myself in a, in a, in a certain way, you know, work things out, just like how am I feeling, why am I feeling like this, uh, you know, just, just, yeah, I just found it helped. 
and I suppose in some ways I do that now but I do it in a verbal form which is hopefully nice and boring for people to listen to but back then there was no internet so I it wasn't far off being internet though we I think there might have been internet but it wasn't like as as we know it I think some businesses started to use it and then it you know but it wasn't actually publicly around I'd never heard of it in in this country anyway so the first time I heard of the internet was it was 97 but it was late in 97 and then again yeah like then 98 99 and I didn't I, I liked the internet and I used the internet but it wasn't till 2000 that I started really liking the internet and I started building websites and stuff so that's when I got uh, completely hooked on website building and HTML coding and all that stuff but yeah that was my little I went through a little phase of that but yeah, you know, I used to have my tea bag, you know, and I get a cup of tea. You know, my friend, right? Is this weird? Oh, just tell me if this is weird or not. He used to. I used to. I'd get up in the morning. I'd go into the kitchen. And I'd open the cupboard. And he was inside the cupboard with his trousers down. That's weird, isn't it? Isn't that weird? It's a weird, weird way to sleep, don't you think? Uh, no, he'd, what he used to do, he used to leave things open, which now gives you a different visual when you imagine him underneath the cupboard, in the cupboard. Um, he honestly, if he if he ate bread, right, he'd leave the bread open. He wouldn't, he wouldn't put it back in the cupboard. He wouldn't like t tw twist it round, you know, so it's kind of sealed again. Just leave it open. Uh, butter he'd leave out which I kind of understand now because the kind of butter he had was Irish butter and it goes hard in the fridge so give him that but margarine which is what I used to get he'd leave out milk he'd leave it. anything just leave it out it just I just, just I know it's probably time to let it go but Anyway, so just thinking back to the time, so I used to, I can't remember the first time I had tea, and there was a time when I used to never drink tea, I think really, it was when I was in my late teens, when I'd left school, I don't think I really drank tea. I was more into Coke or fizzy drinks. Lilt. Lilt was one of my favourites. And water. I've always been a, a water drinker. So right from, yeah, even when I was a kid, I was just, I like water. So that's, I think that's probably the only healthy thing that I've done consistently is I drink a fair amount of water the tea I'm trying to think when I started and there was a time oh man because when, when I stopped smoking I kind of back in 2000 and there was a period for about a year when I put a lot of weight on and I was eating more and I was drinking more and all that stuff. But there was this little period when I used to watch the wrestling late at night. And I think it was live, like it was the WWF, I think it was back then. And now it's WWE, isn't it? It was WWF uh, in the late 90s or no. 2000s early 2000s so I used to watch that and it was so funny 
it was just it was just so anarchic so just silly but I used to love it because they'd, they'd have the live shows and they'd have the British Bulldog and The Rock and uh, Undertaker and uh, what's his name Big Show and uh, Triple H it's, I can't remember I'm, I remember their names blimey uh, is it Steve Austin Cold Stone Cold Steve Austin and I used to follow it I just used to just enjoy it because it was just it was funny it was silly but it was funny and there was other programs I used to watch but the reason I mentioned the programs because they were late at night at early hours in the morning sometimes but I went through this little phase when I was having a cup of tea so I'd go down into the kitchen because I was lodging in this place so I just had a little room but I went into the kitchen I try and be quiet because I, I do try and be considerate when it comes to the noise and stuff um, try to be and I it's hard to do that with a kettle because they're not the quietest things but you know, I close the doors and stuff. Um, the problem is, whenever I make a cup of tea, back then I like to practice on the drums. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a bit of a noisy experience. So I made a cup of tea. I went and I'd, I'd have crumpets. Tea, you know, they're like tea crumpet things. And I think I might have had jam on the crumpets or maybe I had crackers with jam I think it was crumpets and I'd bring them upstairs and I'd sit there and I'd eat these crumpets or the jam on crackers and or maybe jam on toast even it was just whatever was available and it was lovely nice cup of tea and I probably spent all day working on the websites you know doing the, the building the websites and stuff that was because that was what I was into at that time and it's so nice just remember that so that nice cup of tea but I didn't drink tea that often even then I mean all the way through really having be brought up to drink tea or brought up with tea I then went quite Again, not against it but I didn't really drink tea much and then I went through a period because I used to work in this cold like this place that was very cold like a fridge thing so a cup of coffee or a cup of tea that was warm from the machine was actually useful it was just to, to warm me up and then but it was always the same kind of tea. I mean, I never had a favourite type of tea. I didn't really care. Uh, I was, I guess I was affected by the adverts. I didn't know what kind of tea I was drinking at home when I was a kid. Just didn't, didn't care. Just as a cup of tea. I wasn't a connoisseur. Hadn't really, uh, yeah, I wasn't bothered really. But the big tea bags, the big companies back then, you got PG Tips, Tetley Tea. I can't remember what other ones there was. Is it PG Tips that used to have the monkeys? The talking, talking monkeys all dressed up. I think that was PG Tips. Beans means Heinz. No, that's a different product. But yeah, it was the monkeys, I think. Tetley Tea. Unless that was Tetley Tea with the monkeys. What other? So you've got PG Tips, Tetley Tea, uh, Red Label, was that another one? But that's, that was, yeah, I don't know about that one. It was in a red box, I think. PG Tips, Tetley Tea. Um, 
I mean, there's lots of different brands. I just can't remember what ones. I think PG Tips and Tetley are the, the two biggest brands. Yeah, I think they are in the country. So, God, there's probably others that are really, really famous and I've not thought of them. It's because I I use, what's the Yorkshire tea? That's that's quite popular, I think, Yorkshire tea, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit too strong for me. Although sometimes, not so much now, but in the past, and I do, I do mean recent past, going back a few months, I used to put two tea bags into a cup so that the tea would be ready quicker. So it saved me about two seconds. But I didn't I didn't I didn't need to do that when I was making my breakfast because the tea bag would be in the, the cup of hot water for you know maybe four minutes, maybe longer. So I didn't need two tea bags. But I think part of the reason is because I was visiting someone that was making me tea, but one tea bag it wasn't that they were putting too much milk in but, but I think they were putting too much milk in so with two tea bags it kind of cancelled out the extra milk because I literally put a dash a dash of milk in my tea not really a I, I like milk but not not in tea so much although I don't really want black tea I can drink black tea if it's got sugar in it but I don't have sugar in my tea anymore. So it completely ruins the point of it. In fact, I don't even, I don't even know why I drink tea. Because I'm, no, I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it not having sugar because I haven't had sugar for over three months in my tea. So I'm getting used to it. And I suppose if I'm honest, and let's face it, we all know I don't like being honest. I probably don't even notice it so much anymore. Yeah, probably don't actually. So my taste buds have readjusted around it. But it's still not the same. However, you know, it was it's been worth it. I'm glad I'm glad that I cut down on my sugar and it you know, I actually did make some changes. So my blood pressure is perfect now, my blood sugar level. I'm still waiting to find out about that. But the 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 the, 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 the cholesterol is way down. Uh, my weight's decreased by about I've lost over a stone maybe a stone and a half in probably five months four or five months so yeah it's it's been good it's it's definitely not because sugar is quite easy to cut out in a sense it's not easy necessarily but it's easy in the sense of outside of processed food which potentially has sugar in it's quite yeah, we know that there's sugar in chocolate. There's obviously sugar in sugar. Um, as far as sugar in a tea and stuff. But sugar in chocolate, cakes, biscuits, they all have sugar in them. So by cutting all that stuff out, it has, and fizzy drinks. But I'd already drunk, I'd already cut out fizzy drinks pretty much altogether long before I started uh, cutting out sugar but that was more to do with my tooth I had a bad tooth incident at the beginning of the year and I thought ooh I remember that I, remember, I've, and I wasn't sitting in this chair but I might have been standing up but I remember thinking ooh that's it no more coke I remember like no more coke for me no 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 no, 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 my cock. No. I leave the cock alone. And I didn't. I've not been back. Not not touched one. 
although I do sometimes feel just the urge to have one in my mouth, you know, just, just that, you know, when you open a can of Coke and it just, that first, like, especially if it's cold, it's like, oh, on a summer, hot summer's day, but no, I chose, I'm not putting, I'm not putting one anywhere near my lips again, this is it, I say again, I mean, there's no harm in having a, having a drink of Coke every now and then, but I haven't yet, and I don't miss it now. I don't know the fact that I'm talking about it may me mean that I do miss it, but I used to drink six cans a day. Six cans, sometimes a lot more, but six cans every day, and yeah, I liked I liked it a lot. And sugar, 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 it's like continuously, cakes, biscuits, cans of drink, you know, it's like sugar was my, it was my everything, it was a love affair, I had a love affair with sugar, and that love affair came to an end, and now, literally, my tea is bitter now like at the end of lots of love affairs there's bitterness and that's my tea although I'm getting used to it now I'm getting used to it but just getting used to something doesn't mean it's okay but hey it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine and the weird thing about tea I, I always thought tea is just tea it's a tea bag it's tea that's it just a tea bag and you know I've I've served cups of tea in a canteen. I've served cups of tea in various different settings over the years, different jobs I've had. You know, I've served hundreds of cups of tea in a setting, in a seating or whatever, you know, during a lunchtime when I worked in a in a canteen. But what I never really knew about did I know about it? I don't think so. I might have kind of known about them, but it wasn't until I worked in a gift shop, the Buddhist gift shop, in 2003. And that was around November time, maybe December, November, December 2003. I started working in this gift shop and they, I couldn't believe it, they said, because I was a newbie, one of my jobs was to make tea for everyone and the Buddhists love their tea I got I came to find out especially this this bunch they love their tea and I said okay I'll make you a cup of tea and I, I said oh, I said where's the kettle I said oh, I was just near the sink I said where's the sink so it's in the kitchen where's the kitchen like just, just show me around will you okay so they showed me where it was and I said well, where's the where's the tea he said oh it's, it's above the it's above the kettle like the cupboards and it's in the other cupboard as well I thought blimey they must buy in bulk so because there was one two one Two, one, two, three, four, four full time people working there, and me. I mean, I was kind of sort of employed to cover the Christmas period, and I stayed on until the summer, um, but part time. So I was, it was only a part time job, but I probably did a few more hours during Christmas. Because that's their busiest. That's basically the that's the time that kept them open for the rest of the year. I mean, there was also like Mother's Day and uh, you know birthdays and stuff like that. I guess, but generally, uh, Christmas and the bank holiday sales that was where they were the most busiest. 
a lovely little shop. It was really nice. And I worked in both of them. Well, both, I worked in two. I worked in that one there, in that town. And then when I moved to go to be closer to my university, I worked in that one, that gift shop. So I ended up working in two different gift shops from the same, uh, it was the same Buddhist company. So, uh, yeah, so there was like four, four, five people, including me, and maybe a part-timer as well, maybe even a volunteer. So it was, there was a handful of people, maybe six, and they wanted a cup of tea. So what I did is I got one of those little pads, the little pad thing, whatever, and I just like go to people, but basically, you know, how many sugars? Do you want milk? How many sugars? That was it. That's what I thought I was going to be writing down. That is not what I ended up writing down. I was, I, honestly, I couldn't believe what was happening. There was, I was getting requests like licorice and strawberry, uh, echinacea and rattlesnake and stinging nettles, literally stinging nettles, stinging nettle tea with uh, crocodile tongue, I don't know, whatever, different, so many different types of tea, sometimes mixed, never any sugar, never any milk, well sometimes soya milk, so sometimes they would have like normal tea, but with soya milk, they didn't drink, never had milk in there, and I remember looking at this list thinking, really? Really? How, how was that tea bag? How was that tea? Well, I went into the to the kitchen bit and the cupboard above the where the kettle area was, the sink, full of tea bags, but not the ones I needed. I thought, well, I can't do the stinging nettles and albatross tea and the Wicked Witch's hat and Dorothy's toothbrush tea is not, it's not there either. And they said, no, no, it's in the other cupboard. I opened the other cupboard. There was like 50 boxes of tea, lots of different, everything you can imagine. I'm, I'm licorice. I, honestly, I, you might think I'm exaggerating, and I probably am, but there was a lot of tea bags, a lot of boxes of tea, of all types. Never seen hardly any of them before. I knew about um, mint tea. I'd heard about that before, and... The, I think that's supposed to be quite good for you, isn't it? I think for cleansing and stuff. Well, anyway, I didn't know what I was going to find when I opened these boxes. So it all seemed a little bit too, um, not Ouija boardy, but witchcrafty, but just a little bit herbally, a little bit, I guess they were herbals, her herbs, a little bit esoteric possibly a little bit stonehenge a little bit I'm getting out of here and I'm going to hide kind of it was a bit mm, a bit mm, I'm not sure about this but anyway I opened them up and they were just the box it was just like a normal box of tea bags it looked exactly the same as tea bags but I had or smelt different definitely a lot of different fruit teas strawberry and black currant and as I said peppermint was one and none of them had caffeine in even the even the tea bags didn't have caffeine and I think it was they might I don't think there was any normal tea in fact I think I had to go out and buy some for myself because I wasn't willing to try any of that muck that they were drinking. 
I think that was my attitude at the time. Although I came round and I did pretty much tried a lot of them, a lot of the different teas, and they were okay. I just it wasn't tea. You know, it wasn't tea. Yeah, they call it tea, but it wasn't tea. Because tea is tea, isn't it? Um, putting something in in the same format as a tea bag doesn't make it tea. You know, it's... Put a squirrel in a goldfish bond, a goldfish bowl, doesn't make it a goldfish it's you know is it wasn't which should be it wouldn't be a nice thing to do it was saying just generally i only tried it once but generally it's just like this isn't tea but it is a flavored water which you could argue that's what tea is but it wasn't too bad because one of the things about one of the things about Buddhism is one of the pretext, uh, whatever you call, what you call them, is to not indulge in stimulants, and that doesn't just involve alcohol or any of those things, but also caffeine is a stimulant. So, I mean, not everybody abides by that rule. Not everyone classes caffeine as you know as a stimulant but some of them did so they really tried to keep off of anything like that I was never that hardcore but I did well I, I didn't even stop drinking I did stop drinking for two, June 2004 I, mean, I don't drink any alcohol ever now but I used to hell yes if I was you know someone actually said to me not not to me but they said about this podcast that I must be drunk because of the way I talk and the stuff I talk about. My stomach's gurgling. The ironic thing, it's probably not ironic at all, but the thing is, if I was drunk, this would not be like this. This recording would not, it wouldn't be like this. I never once made a let me boy to sleep whilst drunk. In fact, I don't even think I've even had a drink whilst making a recording like uh, alcoholic beverage not I don't think even once I might be wrong but I don't think I ever have definitely I haven't even been drunk since I don't think I've ever been drunk inside this flat it's only when I've gone out to like weddings and stuff like that just to kind of I've always I've always struggled a little bit with big social events uh, so yeah but anyway I this is not how I would sound I don't mean I'd be slurring I don't mean it like that I mean I'm not like this when I'm drunk I'm a different different little fishy altogether I would say depending on my mood but I think it, it possibly accentuates the mood I'm in which is can be either good or not so good so yeah that's why I don't it's not why because I don't I don't I got no interest in alcohol anymore which is probably why I drink tea because there is my stomach's gurgling. Can you hear that? If I didn't drink tea, it'd just be water. And water all the time is... Mm. It's, you know, it's a bit... It's not really exciting. Not that a cup of tea is exciting necessarily. But it is... It's nice to have something a bit different. Uh, I suppose I can... You know, I could drink fruit juice... Uh, try and find one that's low in sugar but generally I seem to have thought I found an even uh, you know I might I'm thinking about going, getting back into juicing where I used to do carrots and 
various vegetables and stuff and I had a juicing machine and that was quite good I might get back to doing that again because it's quite good for detoxification and it's got a lot of vitamins and stuff in there so I might look into that I don't know we'll see the other thing okay so that was I mean so many different types of tea bags now I made a bit of a mistake do you know when you you try and tidy up and you put all your tea bags into kind of one big container well, I got a little bit carried away with that and realised that all of the tea bags looked exactly the same even though they weren't. So I ended up having to guess which boxes they went back into. Um, so yeah, that was that was a weird situation. But that was that was alright. I don't I haven't had fruit tea for a long time, but I used to drink fruit tea you know, every now and then. And all we have to say that sentence every now and then, I think of the Bonnie Tyler song. I need a hero, every time I have a hero to the end of the night, every now and then, every now and then, every now and then. I need a hero. So, Every now and then I get a little bit and in a going wild. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit in a the sound of my tears around. Every now and then I get a little bit. I love Bonnie Tyler. I was so sad when she tried when she she actually applied to be on. What's that chair turnaround music thing? Not the X Factor, but the other one, where they've got their they've got their backs to the singer, and then they turn around. The Voice, the UK, the Voice. Bonnie Tyler applied for that, not as a celebrity, but as just as an ordinary person, as a normal member of the public. And I not understand to this day why. She didn't even get through. It didn't even turn around. And as far as I... She is still a superstar. She's... She, you know, like Shirley Bassey or Bonnie... Um, um, what's her name? Oh, what was her name? Lulu or... I'm trying to think. Uh, Flash boot city. Do, 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 do. Uh, welcome to the Thunder Zone. Thunder Zone. Um, um, blimey, I can't think of her name now. But she was, yeah, you know, someone. Like, I know that she, she had a much bigger career than any of the others. Not Bonnie, but this this one that I can't remember her name now. I know exactly what she looks like. I know the song she plays. She played, rather. But not Aretha Franklin. Aretha Franklin, what a voice. But, you know, someone like Aretha Franklin, she was a legend, wasn't she? She was in a... On the, on the level, on the level of... Not not necessarily fame, but just accomplishment. Aretha Franklin was one of the true greats. Um, but I think Bonnie Tyler was also a superstar to me. Because those songs, you know, especially the... Um, Turn around, even now and then I get a little bit... Turn around 
Every now and again, I got a little bit of a turn around. Every now and again, I got a little bit of a turn around. Every now and again, I got a little bit of a turn around. Every now and again, I got a little bit of a turn around. Bright eyes. Every now and then I get apart. Cause I need you more tonight. And I need you more than ever. And if you only hold me tight, we'll be holding on forever. We'll be gone to the end of the night. And it's only on to never be the end of the night. A low be as I thought I'd ride at night. I really need you tonight. Forever's gonna start tonight. Forever's gonna start to. Once upon a time I was falling in love, now I'm only falling apart. Something I said to a total eclipse of the heart. That's it, total eclipse of the heart. That was one of my favourite songs ever. I mean, in the world, ever. In my entire world of being alive. That was one of my favouritest songs. Uh, as was the Down Under uh minute work the they did the song what was it called it was about um do you come from a land down under down under yeah there's that was i think that was kind of a similar period to the total eclipse of the heart from bonnie tyler and I would have been about 12. That was a very, very memorable period of my life. And I loved the songs of that, that year. That was just one of the really good years of the 80s for me, personally. Songs-wise, song-wise. Yeah. So, and I think I had my appendix out that year as well. When I was 12. So that was a that was a lovely that was a lovely holiday. I loved loved being in hospital, uh, having the appendix out. That was one of the highlights of my life. That was <laughs> sad, but it's true. Um, what else? So even like when I had my adenoids out. Trust me, I'm going back to tea bags. See, I stick to the subject told you I don't do that in any other any other recording I do on the Let Me Boy to Sleep podcast I, I never st- I don't I don't really keep, I mean I, I suppose for the Q&A Fridays I do because I've got questions that I answer so I am kept in check with the questions so they bring me back to what I'm doing but outside of that this you know, the fact that I'm here to talk about tea bags is it keeps me focused. As you probably noticed, I've been incredibly focused on tea bags. And I'll be honest with you, I feel quite proud of myself. I think this might be the greatest accomplishment of all time that anyone's ever done, <laughs> any human ever. When I had my adenoids out, when I was eight, yeah, I was eight years old, seven or eight. Uh, basically, it's because I was going, I was partially deaf in one ear. I say partially, quite, quite badly deaf in one ear. And I was having ear aches, and I didn't know what was causing it, and they didn't know what was causing it. The doctors, and I kept having tests, and. I went through a period when I was going to the school nurse nearly every day with an earache. And they kept examining my ears and they were giving me hearing tests and I was partially, you know, I was was like, I say partially, I don't know to what extent, but I was deaf in one ear. We don't know how long it's for, whether I'd been born like that, whether it's, the doctor said at the time it could have been caused by a, a trauma to the head, it could have, or to the ear, or you know it could have been a multiple of things. Uh, but it might, but I might have been born like that. And the, there was a discussion at the time with the teachers, and 
I think my stepmom said to me, that's why I was so behind in school. It's probably one of the reasons why I was so behind in school. I mean, it was the simple fact that we kept moving around. Like before, before I was with her, we were moved around so much that I never really settled in one school. And then even when we went and lived with her and my, my dad, it was, I still moved to three different junior schools and then to high school. I did, so I was in my third junior, no, I was in the second junior school of that town and I'd already been in another junior school before that. So I'd moved around a lot. So I, I didn't, the, the theory, what she said was, it's weird that I remember this, but she said something yeah why are you hiding in the cupboard that was one thing but then when I came out I said no nothing so why are you wearing my bra so that anyway forget that she said why did you I said to her you know like what do you mean is this is why I'm behind in school she said well you know that we've all been calling you a dunce all this time I said yeah I noticed she laughed I didn't and no she didn't say it. she said you've not been able to hear properly which means that the teachers thought you were just ignoring them but actually, because I used to sit at the back, because I was trying to ignore the teachers, the I didn't want to be, you know, I didn't want the attention on me, really. And I, I guess I wasn't able to hear properly what was going on. I mean, the fact is, I mean, I wasn't interested anyway. And... I also found it very distracting having other people around and very noisy sometimes even though I was partially deaf I used to didn't like the noise but I used to sit very very close to the television and I remember the Yeah, my dad always used to say, how come whenever you talk to me, you always, you always move your right ear towards my face? I said, I don't know. Didn't know I was doing it, but I always started trying to hear. He said, but you're only two inches away. <laughs> <laughs> Get your ear out of my mouth. It's like, no. I, I didn't know. I didn't know that I was partially deaf. Didn't know it. Did not know until the doctors told me and I was as I was getting tested and I used to have this machine I used to go beep beep like all the different sounds and I'd be in this little cubicle with headphones on and I used to have to press the button every time I could hear the sound and they'd do it in each ear you know sort of test it so one ear was okay and the other ear was not okay so at the end of that they removed my adenoids because they said well it must be some kind of a blockage so this might help to clear the canal or whatever I don't really know how it all works so I went to hospital there's tea bags involved in this story don't worry and just just letting you know I'm I'm, I'm on the ball so I was in there this was like a this wasn't a nice experience the same as when I had my appendix out that was brilliant that was in a bright ward upstairs you know other kids it was great this one downstairs was like in a some kind of crypt it was dark it was underground I think and it wasn't as far as I remember there wasn't even anyone else in the room it was a kids ward but it was just there might have been one other person one other kid and it was just dull and mm, grimy. It wasn't, yeah. But it was an old hospital. They closed it down. And, yeah. 
I'm not sure if they removed the other kid from the bed first, but I imagine they did. So I, this woman, what well, she was a, I guess she was a nurse. She might have not been a nurse, but she came with a trolley full of stuff like tea, coffee, you know, anything you could want. And she said, would you like a hot drink before bedtime? And I said, what do you mean bedtime? She said, well, you know, bedtime. I said, I've been in this bed for three days. All time is bedtime when you live in a bed. She laughed. She said, to her, so do you want a cup? I said, what, what's 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 on offer? What what is it? She said tea, coffee, hot chocolate, or bovril. Those are the four things. Have you got any fruit tea? Stinging nettles, maybe. <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, so she said, yeah. So tea, coffee, hot chocolate, maybe bovril. I think it might have been hot chocolate or bovril. I know they're not the same thing, but they're kind of similar. Uh, to me and bovril I'd never had bovril before and I just thought I couldn't decide something about me you might not know apart from being super sexy is oh did I say oh, lies I were lies no I've struggled for since I was little to make decisions to choose which is why I just stick to the same thing I eat the same breakfast every day I eat the same thing every time I go to McDonald's not that I go in there very often but it's been the same meal for 30 years pretty much a quarter pound of cheese with a milkshake that, that's that's what I've had. That's just have the same thing. Uh, sweet corn pineapple pizza. If I have pizza, if I start looking at the menu, I don't know what to do. It's too much choice, too confusing. Too I can't. Whenever I make a choice or a decision, then I change my mind. So if I go into a restaurant with somebody. I choose what they're eating because otherwise I want what they're eating. It, does that make sense? Like if they have a burger and chips or something tasty and I choose a salad. When my salad arrives, quite often the meals will arrive at the same time, I will want what they've got. So, whatever they've got, I want. It's not that I want other people's stuff. It's just, I can't choose. Like, even when I've ordered something, I start thinking, I start looking at the menu again, thinking, oh, perhaps I, uh, maybe I'd like to some asparagus instead. Asparagus soup. I don't know what asparagus is, but I might like some in soup. I wonder if they do it on toast. So yeah, they do it in tea. Tea bags. Asparagus tea. I'm not sure. Isn't asparagus supposed to be quite good for something? Can't remember what. I'm not sure. Asparagus. Hmm. Huh. So I struggle to make decisions. So that's why I'll eat the same as what other people eat, unless they're having something that I don't like. Now, generally, you know, as things are now, I probably wouldn't choose, well, I wouldn't. If I was with someone, let's say I met up with my dad in a cafe or something, and he had a full English cooked breakfast, I would not have the same thing. I would have done six months ago but now I wouldn't so you know in a situation like that I'd have to choose something else but at the same time if I had something healthy 
or tasteless or well, I guess indist yeah, healthy and tasteless maybe I wouldn't it taste worse knowing that he was tasting nice stuff although if I go into a cafe especially the ones around here not, not that there are any around here but in town when I used to go into town one of my favourite things to have was a cheese omelette chips beans two slices of bread and butter and a can of coke or a cup of tea, depending. And I used to love that. Because I thought, well, it's got eggs, so it's relatively healthy. Beans are good for fibre. And that, that was it, really. That's, I suppose you get some protein from the, from the eggs, don't you? And the cheese. It's got protein in it. And... The bread, the the margarine on the bread, that's got calcium, possibly. But yeah, this it's choosing, choosing things. That's why when I was in that gift shop, bringing it back to tea again, all the choices was too much for me. Didn't like it. I'd rather just have, like, like I have in my cupboard. I don't even have, I don't drink coffee anymore. I just drink tea and water. So I've got one, well, I haven't got a box. I've got that bag of tea bags at the moment. But generally, I've got one box of tea bags. Nothing else to choose from. No other drinks. And that's kind of what I drink. But if I had like 20 different types of tea, I'd spend half my day in the kitchen trying to decide. And once I'd put the water in, I'd be thinking, oh, I want that one now. Oh, I want that one now. Oh, oh I should have tried the banana one. But though, it's just, so now just having one thing is easier. So when I was seven or eight, whatever age I was, when I had my adenoids out, the lady came with the trolley. So obviously tea, coffee, hot chocolate, or bovril. Maybe Horlicks as well, but bovril. But I think I said, no thanks. Then I thought, and then she said, well, you, well there won't be any other drinks now until, this, until tomorrow morning. And I thought, okay. And it might have been... But I was having the operation the next day. So all that was was my last drink before the operation. So I wasn't allowed to drink any water or eat any food between then. And I think they were taking me in like really early hours, like five in the morning or something. And this was around eight at night. So... It was weird because then I, I thought I'll have a cup of tea then. Because I did feel a bit thirsty. And as that was going to be my last drink, I should have something. Should have something. But I didn't, never really a big coffee drinker at that age. In fact, I don't think I ever drank coffee at that age. Really. Every now and then. I didn't. I don't think I'd ever had Horlicks. I might have had hot chocolate. But what I'd never had, because I went through all of them, I'll have that, no, I'll have that, oh, I'll have that. And then I thought, I've never had Bovril before. Well, Bovril is basically just liquid Marmite. I would say it's yeast extract. And it's not exactly the same as Marmite, I don't think, but it's pretty much, it's, yeah. And I thought, okay, I, I've never had bovril before. I'll have that. And she said, are you sure?